So far, we've seen how we can load our templates. We were able to load a single template, then we took it a step ahead and loaded multiple templates. And now we are loading a bunch of templates just using an expression, using a pattern, using pattern matching to load a bunch of templates and we can execute any one of the loaded templates. So that's all cool. Now it's time for this argument. Yeah, this particular argument of the execute template function, which allows us to pass data into our templates. That allows us to pass data into our templates. Our templates are not going to be a bunch of hard coded HTML files. We will need dynamic information in those templates because we're going to be getting information from our database, from some state variables and stuff, and we need it to pass it down to the client and for the client to display. So we have the ability to use dynamic properties inside our Go templates. Go already provides all the infrastructure to do that. And that data is going to be passed here in this third argument to execute or execute template. So let us create a struct. Uh, the best, one of the best ways to pass a bunch of data uh, into a Go template is just to create this uh, custom struct and you just load in a bunch of data inside. So we're going to create a data struct. We're just going to call it data because we're lazy. Uh, it's a struct. And this data struct is going to contain a name variable, which is going to be a string. And um, we're just going to define what it is immediately. So that name variable, the one we're going to be passing for this is going to be Alice. Oh, sorry. Alice. Yeah, we're going to pass Alice to this. Okay, yeah, struct needs this weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the last item in the struct needs this comma. So need to put it there to make go happy. So yeah, we have data. This data we're going to be passing into our uh, template. By the way, now we want to go back to executing the home template. So say home.html, that's what we want to execute. So we want to pass this data to this template. We want to pass it to this template. And what we're going to do to achieve that is to take this data and put it as the third argument of our execute template function. So our data goes in and now it is available inside our template, inside our home.html template. So now let us use it in our home.html template. Um, save this. I'm going to go to home. Uh, let me do view wrap. I'm going to go to home and I'm going to be using this at the contact section. That's the footer. I'm going to use it at the footer. So instead of saying contact us, why don't we say contact Alice? Yeah, that's contact name. Contact Alice. So we need to bring that uh, variable, that name variable here which we set to Alice, we need to bring it into our home.html template. Now to do that, you do your double curly brace. Let's remove the us. Uh, the top level data can be accessed with the dot. Every other thing is within it. So the top level data is simply a dot. So if it's a single value, let's say like a primitive, like a string or a number, once you just put this dot, that will be, the, that will be what will be displayed. But we know we are using a struct and the struct has properties and we define the name property. So we're going to say dot name, dot name. So say dot name. Now, something to note, and this is very, very important. For your struct, the properties have to be in first letter capital. Yeah, first letter capital. Why? Because for Go, that is how you define publicly accessible variables. Yeah, if it is lowercase, it's a private variable and it will not be accessible in your template. Yeah, your template is external to your Go code. So your Go code is not going to allow you to access that uh, property in your template because it, considered it, it considers it as a private property. To make it a public property, you have to make sure that the first letter is capital. Very, very important. So we'll save that. Uh, we have it referenced here as dot name. So that's good. So if we save this and we also save our home.html, make sure that we are loading home.html. Now let us restart our application. Start, uh, yeah, come and see. I think it's time to clear this. Well, let's just, let's just run the application now. So we have the application running. Now if we go to our browser and we refresh, 
we now have our home.html template loaded once again. So we have our home template loaded once again. But now if you go down, instead of saying contact us at contact at example.com, it now says contact Alice at contact at example.com. Yeah, it's using a dynamic variable here and that variable, we set it to Alice. So here you're saying Alice. So that's how you pass data to your template, uh, which is pretty cool. We've been able to pass data to our home.html template. Now, what if, what if we want to pass data to an embedded template? Yeah, inside home.html, let's go back to VS Code, we embedded two templates, uh, the fragment template and the, um, sorry, the header fragment template, sorry, and the main content fragment template. Yeah, we, we embedded those two templates. What do we want to pass data into this template? True the home.html template. Now we're not passing the um, data directly to this template. We want to pass it through the home.html template because that is what we're currently loading. But we want that data to also be accessible to this fragment, to this uh, embedded template. Here's how we do it. First, let us uh, add some more data to make things interesting. So instead of just name, let us also have, uh, let's say title. That'd be like our page title. No, not a page title, is it? Edit title, yeah, edit title. Okay, so we have title, string, and let's say description. No, 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 no. Description will also be a string. The description will be what goes into our paragraph, our content paragraph, main content paragraph. So we have two new properties. We have title, we have description, and as you can note, they are first letters start capital. So, now let's give them data. For title, let's set the title to uh, visitor. It's kind of weird for a title, but let's just go on. So visitor and let's set the description to this paragraph is the new body of our page just set it there and let's put this trailing comma to make go happy so yeah we have new data items and we have def we have given them values which is cool so now all those values are automatically available here they're automatically available inside our template so how do we pass them to our included templates so you can do one of two things first you can pass all of the data that is coming to home.html into the fragment. You can pass everything. And to do that, uh, just after the name of your uh, template, where you included it, you just put space and you put a dot. You put a dot. Like I said, the dot represents all the data. So if you give it a dot, that means you are passing the entire data that is coming to home.html into this EDA fragment template. And you can also do the same for the main content. You can do the same for the main content. Now, another thing you can do is to pass a specific property, pass a specific property uh, inside the fragment, uh, inside the, yeah, inside the uh, template fragment. That's the one you are including. I keep calling it fragment uh, because it is not full HTML. That's why I'm calling it fragment. It's not a full HTML page. It's just a piece of HTML. So you can pass a single um, property. So let's say I just want to pass name. So you can pass it like this and only name is going to go into that particular template. Only name is going to go into it. And from inside that template, from the page, like this page of that template, if you want to access that name uh, property, you have to access it as a dot because that is what represents all the data that is coming into it. So from home, you passed only name, but in the header, that name represents the whole data that is coming into this template. So it has to be a dot. Yeah, it has to be a dot. But let's say we passed everything. If we passed everything, just as we do here, just with a the dot, then inside this header, you have to reference that particular property, which is, uh, let's say, name. Or for the one we want to use for this, it will be visitor. So we want to welcome the person visiting our website. Say, welcome to our website, visitor. So... No, not visitor. The, the, the value is not visitor. I think it's title. Title. Yeah. Title. So it's title. 
not visitor. Probably I should have called the name of the property visitor. That probably would have been more appropriate. But yeah, title. So um, now we have um, used the data that we passed inside here, which is everything. We have used it inside our header template. Now in our body, in our body, for that we use this description, this description uh, property. So let's go into our body template. And instead of all this text, let's just pass in dot description. Because we're also passing the whole data into our main content uh, template. Uh, so we're going to pass it. So that, that will replace all the text. This description will replace all the text inside our page body. So let's go back to home. As we can see, we passed the data by adding it as a second argument to the template uh, function call. So the first argument is the name of the template. The second one is the data. So we just passed all the data. We did the same for the header fragment and the main content fragment. And inside those fragments, in the header, we accessed the title property. And uh, from the body, we access the description uh, property. So let's save that. Uh, save this also. And go to main.go and also save this. So once we have that, we can go to our command line. Scale this. Clear the console. And do go run main.go. Go run main.go. To run our file. Didn't return any error, so we should be good. Let's go to uh, our browser. And now when we refresh, just watch this because we swapped this for a dynamic variable. We also swapped this for a dynamic variable. This has already been swapped for a dynamic variable. So just watch this and this. This should change. So let's refresh. Boom. Welcome to our website, Visitor. Yeah, we don't know the name of the Visitor yet, so we're just using something generic. Welcome to our website, Visitor. And this uh, page paragraph also changes. So this paragraph is the new body of our page. So we're not using dynamic uh, values everywhere. We're using it in our header template. We're using it in our uh, body template. And we are also using it directly in the home.html in our footer, which is so, so awesome. This way you can pass data down to multiple levels of templates and be able to just distribute the data all around your respective templates as needed.